Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Wiesman. My name is Rob Waters, and on behalf of everyone here at Wiesman, welcome to the Wiesman Academy web series training on today's topic, the Vito Crossel 200 CM2 commercial boiler. We hope you enjoy today's uh, webinar, and we thank you for joining us. If you have any questions while this webinar is ongoing, uh, there's a question box in your uh, toolbar of the GoToWebinar software, and you can post a question and, and we'll uh, get to those at the end. Or Mark Norris is with me today and he will uh, try to answer those as we go along as well. So enjoy, and, and again, thank you. Sit back and, and thank you for joining us. So today's topic is the Vito Crossel 200 CM2 boiler. This is a commercial series boiler that V's been introduced in 2012, and it's been very successful product for us. And we keep continuing to see more and more market share with that product. It's it's proven to be a real great product for commercial applications with a with tons of features and benefits that really make it well suited for lots of different applications. So we're going to go through all of the features and the benefits of this product and look in detail at all the things that make that such a great boiler. Start off with a, a kind of a high level overview of the features of this product. And of course, this is a commercial gas fired condensing boiler. So it's following in the footsteps of, of other condensing boiler products that Vespin offers like our Vito Dens residential series, and the Vito Crossel 300 commercial series. So this is a product that kind of fits in between. It's a high water volume, high mass construction boiler. I'll elaborate on this in, in, in a few slides on why that's important and why we think that's such a great feature to highlight of this product. One of the byproducts of that is, is low friction loss in the heat exchanger. So that's kind of two features that kind of work together and I'll explain in detail why why we think that's so important. It's a high temperature boiler. It's capable of producing temperatures up to 210 degrees Fahrenheit on, on some of the models. So that really opens us up for a whole range of retrofit applications where you have existing high temperature radiation or high temperature fan coils that need to be still satisfied. So so this boiler can get you into those low temperature condensing applications like radiant floor heating and snow melting and get you those real high condensing uh, efficiencies. But it also can operate at high temperatures to satisfy those existing retrofit applications. With that condensing operation and the stainless steel combustion chamber and all of the uh, features we have for modulating the burners and, and using outdoor reset technology in the control system, excellent fuel saving uh, operation on this product. Uh, the maximum, the thermal efficiency is rated at 97%. So you're extracting almost the maximum you can out of that natural gas or, or propane gas when, when you burn it. And I'll elaborate a little bit more on that as we go along as well. This boiler, like many in the Vespin product line, uh, is real fast and easy to install and real simple to service. We pride ourselves on making product that the service technician down the road is going to appreciate the way it's put together and how it comes apart. So we make it easy to access components. We make it easy to uh, service and clean heat exchangers. Controls are easy, intuitive, easy to program. So all, all around, it's, it's, it's a product that gives you that life cycle benefit of, of being easy to service and maintain down, down the road. It is a fairly compact design for a commercial boiler. It is designed to fit through most mechanical room doors. So it gets you into that retrofit application where you need to, you know, remove a big old boiler, but you may not have the, the facilities to get in a great big, huge replacement boiler. You have to go modular. And so that means elevators and mechanical room doors are sometimes hard to, to navigate. So this boiler solves a lot of those problems. So we'll give you some of the details on the on the dimensions on this as we move along. So those are the sort of the core 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 features. But uh, I want to also now focus on on what I call sort of the big three parts of any boiler: heat exchanger, burner, control. And to Vespa, these are the three things that really make the heart uh, and soul of every boiler that we produce. One of the things that's unique with Wiesman is that we make all of these components ourselves. So you're getting design match components, burner, control, 
combustion chamber that are all designed and made to work together. We're not cobbling together things from different vendors to make up a boiler. You're getting a true full-blown Wiesmann system. So like all of our boilers for many years, it starts with a heat exchanger and, and this is a tried and true uh, performer here with the Vito Crossel stainless steel uh, heat exchanger. Provides a great uh, feature of self-cleaning action and a sludge and debris settlement area in the bottom of the heat exchanger. So I'll, I'll elaborate on, the, on those later on. The second part of that triangle is the is the burner, and we make our own uh, matrix cylinder premix burner that goes with this product, and it's got some great features with uh, uh, you know high turndown rate, low emissions, and and high altitude operation. And the third part of that triangle is the control. And we make, uh, we use a Vitotronic 300 GW6B boiler control. And it's uniquely designed and introduced for this product. It's got a touchscreen interface, integrated cascade capability. So it really opens up a lot of great possibilities for how you can control your system, control the boilers, interface with the building management system. We have all those great, great things built into this. And internet and, and BMS interface is, is a, a really great strong point of this of this control system and we have a number of different ways we can do that with with 0 to 10 volt inputs inputs or with our VitoCom 100 or VitoGate 300 series modules which allow us to integrate and of course we have a full line of accessories that are used with this uh, all our Vspin products and that includes things like mixing valves actuators custom control panels, which are manufactured here on site to suit the exact requirements of, of, of your job site. And we make domestic water storage tanks so, so you can round out the system with with uh, domestic water production through Wiesman stainless steel uh, Vito cell domestic water storage tanks. So those are kind of the key features and I'll, and I'll come back to many of those as we go through this presentation. But a feature is only good if you can apply a benefit to it. It's great to say, oh yeah, you got all these features, fancy stainless steel, heat exchangers and other things like that, but what's the benefit? And, and to us, there's a lot of great benefits that this boiler offers to your customer, whether it be the end user or the contractor. And the, these are the things that the, the, con, the customers are interested in. So you look at the, the first couple there, long service lights, low, low fuel consumption. Those are certainly what you're gonna get with the, with the de design of this boiler. Simplified designs. Uh, I'll, I'll elaborate on this and show you how we don't need dedicated boiler pumps, primary, secondary piping, low loss headers because of the way this high mass boiler design is, is, is put together. Reliability. Customers want reliable products and with the reduced cycling and less wear and tear uh, caused by the high mass design, we don't have as many breakdowns or as much uh, thermal and mechanical stress on the components. The boilers are uh, suitable for a wide range of applications and uh, you know perfect for multi-zone systems and it's fast and easy to maintain. So so these are real tangible benefits that that the customers are out there looking for. And this boiler really delivers. So here's some of the uh, specifications on this product. It's available in six sizes starting with the CM2186 and goes up to the CM2620. And you can see there the range of modulation for each one of those products. The minimum firing rate on the smallest unit is 133,000 BTUs. And then the maximum firing rate on the, on the biggest one is, is 2.245 million BTUs. And all of those boilers have about a five to one turndown rate. And there is some derating for altitude, but overall, the range gives you a good selection of, of sizes that we can put together as single boilers or as multiple boilers. And that is a, certainly one of the key applications we see for this product is cascaded systems. And we can go with our boiler now, uh, with this product, eight up to eight boilers, getting a total capacity of up to 17.9 uh, million BTUs of input. And we use our GW6B control as the cascade control. So we can link together and daisy chain these boilers together uh, with no external control required. And, and that's a great feature of that, of that new GW6B control. We can also common vent boilers, and, but there is a limit on there of up to only four boilers. And I'll elaborate on that further on. So uh, it certainly is one of the key applications for this product. We see most commercial applications will have at least two or more boilers. And 
this is an example of an installation with, with three CM2 boilers. Uh, we see many, many different combinations, but it certainly is an application that makes sense. And again, with the size of this boiler being modular in size, we can get it into the mechanical room, into the elevators uh, as required to, to retrofit uh, an old, uh, larger piece of equipment. There's the slide which shows you the, the BTS2000 tested efficiencies of this product. Uh, BTS2000 BTS standard is a combination of, of an efficiency, a combustion efficiency test, and a thermal efficiency test. So you can see there is differences in how they're, how they're established. I'm not, I, I'm not going to go into details on here on, on the differences, but you can see th uh, very high efficiencies, both combustion and thermal making this one of the most efficient boilers in the industry. And those are all AHRI certified efficiencies, and you can see those in the directory and then compare them to other products. But really right up there, top efficiencies for all of these products. Now, one of the things about efficiencies you got to remember is that those numbers are great to show you like 97%, but what does it really mean? Well, the thing with a condensing boiler is that the efficiency does vary, and the biggest variable is the return water temperature. And so you're not going to get 95 to 97 percent efficiency all the time if you're not running uh, the boiler at a, under a certain set of conditions, because those test conditions are a fixed set of criteria and 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 test parameters, which give you those efficiencies. But in the real world, things are you're connecting this to different types of systems. You may have different times of the year when you're running higher temperatures and lower temperatures with your outdoor reset control. So the return water temperature is going to be varying from job to job and even from, from season to season. So you can see here the relationship of return water temperature to efficiency. The key with any condensing appliance is that the combustion, the efficiency gets better and better the lower the water temperature gets. Because the lower the water temperature gets, the more you force condensation to form inside that boiler and you can extract it and then capture it and get up to those very high efficiencies. So it peaks out close to 98% uh, with very low water temperatures. So that 80, 90 degree Fahrenheit would be typical of, you know, radiant floor heating or snow melting or maybe a seasonal operation of a system in, in the spring and the fall, you might get very low temperatures running through the heating system. But as you get up to those higher temperatures, 120, 130, even 140, that's a 130, 140 is about when your condensation stops. So now you're just running off the sensible heat of the boiler, and that's when your efficiencies are around 80, 80, 89%. So still good. 89% is still a great efficiency, but uh, you're not getting it all the time. It does depend on what kind of system you connect it to and how you control it. Another great characteristic of this boiler is the pressure and temperature ratings that it's able to achieve. And you can see there that the maximum working pressure is 75 PSI for all models. And the maximum working temperature, it varies for the small size and the big size. The small size is only up to 190, the large size up to 210. And that has to do with the size of the, of the heat exchanger and the, and the BTU capacity of each one of, the, of, those, of those heat exchange surfaces. So with those higher temperatures, uh, it really and the higher pressures, it really opens up a lot of applications for both retrofit and new new construction, because in in the retrofit market, you're many times dealing with multi-story buildings where you need those higher pressures if the mechanical room is in the basement of the building. So 75 psi really is uh, is is what we need for for a lot of these these multi-story retrofit applications with. And a lot of times those will have also high temperature baseboard as your radiation. So the combination of those two parameters really makes this boiler well suited for just about any application out there. And this is, of course, an ASME certified boiler. So all of these temperatures and pressures are ASME certified. And you see the, uh, the H stamp the ASME rating plate there from one of the, a picture from one of the boilers. Another great characteristic of the Vito Crossel boiler is the quiet operation. In the, if you look at a lot of other models of boilers or older boilers that have power-fired burners, 
the noise level can be substantial on these things and, and, and often deafening when you're in the mechanical room. So uh, this boiler is extremely quiet. The matrix burner we use, the premix uh, burner technology with the modulation is extremely quiet. It has a very small uh, blower motor. We also encase it with uh, inside the cover, completely inside the cover of the boiler. So there's sound deadening insulation in the front cover. You just don't get a lot of noise coming out of this appliance. Standing in front of the boiler, 45 decibels with the front cover installed. And you can see on that chart down the bottom there, that's in between a quiet office and a conversation. That That's that's extremely quiet operation for the size of equipment. And certainly that is a factor that comes into play in a lot of buildings nowadays where the mechanical room may be close to other parts of the building that, that, that noise can be a real factor. So, so certainly not an issue in all installations, but it's a great feature that makes this boiler, uh, again, quite unique in the industry. It's compact in size, and that, that is a bit relative because it is a big commercial boiler, but where, where it really shows itself is that if you look at the bottom of that chart there in the blue, you can see the width of the pressure vessel without the insulation installed, that's without insulation and jacketing on, is, you know, maximum 38 inches. Most of them are 36 inches or below. So that means you can get this boiler through most mechanical room doors. Uh, only the biggest one, probably the 620, would be a bit of an issue for some situations at 38 inch uh, width. It certainly makes it very accessible to to the vast majority of mechanical rooms out there and elevators as well. You can see on the diagram at the top there, the length, width, height. The height is consistent for all models. The width and the length grow as you get into bigger capacity. So, so the first three models. Uh, are all the same size. You can see there the uh, 80, 186, 246, and 311 are all the same, exact same dimensions for all models. The, the difference would be the number of and the size of the heat exchange surfaces within the boiler. Now, when you get into the bigger series, 400, 500, 620, you do start to get bigger and bigger lengths and, and widths as you go up through that series of boilers. And we also list service clearances, uh, which are, are are fairly minimal as well. So again, it, it means you can you can squeeze this boiler into most mechanical rooms. Uh, it doesn't require huge amounts of clearances on the sides, especially. On the, uh, there's nothing to service really on the sides of the boiler. It's only the front of the boiler. You need to be able to swing that burner door open, and get into the to the front of the combustion chamber for cleaning. And at the back end of the boiler, of course, you have all your piping, your vent connections, your condensate drains, things like that. So you need a little bit more room at the back of the boiler, but only 24 inches off the front. So let's take a closer look at the boiler itself and some of the individual parts of that boiler. And, I, and again, I'm going to specifically focus on what I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the big three, the three parts of that boiler that really make it uh, work together. And that's the, the heat exchanger, the burner, and the control. And you can see where they're located there on, on the boiler. The uh, Vitrotronic 300 control is, is mounted on the top of the jacket. And it, all of the cabling runs underneath the jacket and comes out the back of the boiler. The Inox Crossel stainless steel heat exchanger is located in the in the in the, the, the center part of this of, of the boiler. It is angled. You can see it's mounted on an angled frame. And that provides uh, uh, the drainage you need for a condensing boiler. Because there's moisture and condensate forming inside this vessel when uh, it's in operation, it always has to drain away to the back. So that's why you have a high point at the front and a low point at the back. So we'll look in greater detail at all three of those components, the burner, the heat exchanger, and the control as we move through this. We have lots of insulation in this boiler, and that's that's a unique feature as well. We We've always believed at Wiesman that you need to insulate a boiler very effectively to make sure you're not losing heat in the mechanical room. Uh, Water-cooled stainless steel combustion chamber. One of the things you notice there as you see on this boiler is there's a lot of water packed in the front end of this of this combustion chamber. It's angled on the front side, so you have like almost like a 
triangular wedge of water of higher water content. We pack a lot of water in the front of the boiler so that you rapidly reduce the temperature of the, of the flue gases. And that encourages you to, uh, when, the, when the flue gases pass through into this inox crossel section of the boiler, they've already dropped in temperatures quite a bit. And if the amount of condensation, all, pretty much all the condensation is going to occur in this back section of the heat exchanger because we, we pull a lot of the, of the heat off at the front with that large mass of water coming off the top of the boiler. There is an internal boiler frame that the boiler sits on and, and also it holds all the jacket in place. So all the jackets uh, hang on to that internal boiler frame. And there's a look at the boiler stripped down without the insulation, the jacket on there. You can see how it's angled and sits on that frame. There is adjustable feet on that boiler, so you can very easily make the boiler level in, in a mechanical room that may not have the most level floor. Uh, and you can see there all most of the tappings there, the supply and return are flange connected, uh, ANSI flange connectors on the, both the supply and return. We have a couple of other connectors in the top of the boiler there, the safety header, the pressure gauge connection. And in the very back of the boiler is where your vent, your flue gas comes out, your vent pipe connects in the back. And you also have in the back of this boiler a boiler drain and a condensate drain as well. So we'll show you, take a closer look at those later on. The burner door is uh, fully hinged. So you can have it right side or left side connection. You don't have to order anything special. It's it's uh, something that's configurable in the field. So you can decide which configuration makes most sense for your mechanical room layout. So here's just a quick look at all the uh, the outputs. You can see, uh, num uh, uh, and if you look up here, you can see the, the numbers A and B are your supply and return connections. C is the safety header connection. D is the gas connection normally comes in the back but there is also a punch out on the side of the of the jacket if you want to bring the gas train down and punch it right in the bottom here you can do that as well but uh, normally it would come in through the back and up where it's totally hidden uh, there is on the back of this is the back view of the boiler here you can see uh, e is the boiler drain f is the condensate drain and there is a p trap built into that condensate drain as well uh, g is your vent connector and H is the combustion air inlet connection. And we'll show you those in more detail as we move, move through. Uh, here's just a quick chart of all the dimensions. This is from our tech data manual. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through this, but you can see the vent venting pipe varies from eight to 10 inches. Supply piping is either two and a half or four. And then the uh, mostly their connections are one three quarter inch up to one and a quarter inch, depending on, on what it's for. Now we, really promote the fact that this is a high mass, high water content boiler. Very similar to other models of boilers that we sell, like the uh, uh, Vito Crossel 300 series boilers are both high mass, high water content. So why do we keep talking about this? Why is mass and water volume important? And why, why are we, we pointing it out? And I would ask, you know, how does it impact the boiler's operation? Well, I can answer both of those with the next few slides and tell you that it is very important and that it has a very positive impact on the operation of the boiler. So let's take a closer look. Vespin has a long history of, of promoting mass, high mass, high water content boilers. So it's not new to us. We've been teaching the merits for years. You can see, see to the left there, there's an old slide I pulled from one of my old presentations in 2000 where we talked about the Vitola biferro boiler, the VBC series. Look at the mass and water volume. That's a small residential, small commercial boiler, a 300,000 BTU boiler with 60 gal almost 60 gallons of water in there and 941 pounds of mass. And we promoted back then, you know, larger water content equals longer burner run times, fewer burner cycles, higher efficiency, less wear and tear, and lower emissions. So we still promote that today, and it's still the message we want to bring through with this product. And another example is the Vito Crossel 300 CT3 series. Again, another high mass, high water volume boiler there. You can see 222 gallons of water in that biggest Vito Crossel. So we definitely carry that tradition forward in this CM2 series boiler. It's got a high mass design with large water content. And you can see that that shows itself in a, in a very large heat exchanger surface area 
low thermal loading on that uh, of that heat exchanger is 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 a great benefit. It's got wide water passageways and large water content. The large water content is what gives the motor thermal mass and the flywheel effect. So that really has a huge impact on the cycling uh, of the boiler. The wide water passageways and, and large water volume also equate to much lower friction loss. I'll show you that in a minute. And the lower thermal loading certainly has an impact on the lifespan of the boiler. When you have a heat exchanger surface that's thermally overloaded, it doesn't tend to last as long. Metal fatigues, it's heating up and cooling down, and, and it can be a real problem with longevity. So there's some of the specifications of the CM2 series. You can look at C, you know, mass, water, volume, heat exchanger, surface area, very large on, on these boilers. So you can see water content ranges from 74 up to 131 gallons of water. Boiler weight, you know, quite large, up to almost 2,000 pounds. And the heat exchanger surface area, very significant on these boilers. So I would task you to compare this to other products in the market. You know, how does it stack up against some of the competition? I think you'll find that the CM2 series would have more weight, more water content, and more heat exchanger surface area than most boilers on the market. And again, the benefits uh, show itself and how it operates. Looking closer at that friction loss and the wide water passageways, you can see that translates into very low friction loss. You look at the friction loss chart here for the CM2 boiler series. An example would be the CM2 500, a design flow rate at 20 degree delta T around 171 GPM. And at that flow rate, if you go up to the friction loss chart here, 171 and across, you get about 22 and a half inches of water column. That's less than two feet of head. That's almost inconsequential when you're sizing a pump. So what this means is that you don't need a big high head pump to drive the water through this boiler. And high head pumps cost a lot of money to purchase. They also cost a lot of money to operate. So we're saving you money up front in, in the initial design of that boiler room, and you're saving you money in electricity costs. So two very positive impacts in how that boiler operates. So if you look at overall, the, the three big benefits you get with mass and water volume, just to sum it up, is, is durability and reliability because of the less stress and the, and the less cycling. You get simplified design, fewer components. You're looking at no minimum flow rates, no flow switches required, no dedicated boiler pump required, no high head, no high head pump is required, and no low loss header or second, primary secondary piping is required. Now, you can still use low loss headers, but it's not required to protect the boiler. The boiler does not care about the, the, as much about the flow. So it just overall makes us a more forgiving boiler design, less susceptible to flow fluctuations and burner cycling. Uh, better design for mismatched or micro-load systems. So great features and benefits of high mass and water volume design. So again, that's why we talk about it. That's why we feel it's important. And that's why we feel it has a very positive impact on how that boiler operates and how long it's going to last and, and what kind of uh, piping configuration you can use for it. Now, we recognize that if you have a lot of mass and water volume, you have to keep the heat inside the boiler. So you can see here, we use a very thick four inch insulation blanket on the front and the sides of that unit that completely wraps around and gives you a really, really, you know, uh, thermos tight seal on, on, on the heat inside this boiler. And we believe that you want to keep the heat in the water, not in the mechanical room. And you don't want to walk into a mechanical room and have a smoking hot uh, sauna in, in mechanical room, which a lot of these old boilers that you're replacing will often see. You know, there was very poor insulation on a lot of older mechanical, uh, older boiler systems. You, you pull out a lot of retrofit boilers and you see, you know, sometimes like half an inch of insulation. Or especially if you're replacing atmospheric boilers, you've got huge exposed vent pipe, single wall vent pipe in the mechanical room running at five, 600 degrees. So you, you, it's not unusual to do a boiler room retrofit with a, with a Vito Crosso tuner boiler and have a situation where the temperature in the mechanical room just collapses to where it's actually comfortable at room temperature because you're not spewing all this excess heat in the mechanical room. So let's take a closer look at the at that Inox Crossel heat exchanger. This is a, a extremely corrosion resistant, high grade 316 TI stainless steel 
uh, construction. And this is a design that was developed and manufactured by Wiesman themselves, and it's got some real track record. Over 25 years we've been using the seat exchanger design. First introduced with the Vertimat boiler at that time, and it was later the name was changed to the Vito Crossel 300, but the Vertimat boiler was introduced in 1993 with this heat exchanger design. And uh, we now we still currently use it on several different Vito Crossel models. You see in that picture at the bottom left corner there, the Vito Crossel 300CU3A series is now manufactured with that heat exchanger. This design, you can also see that we're showing it here on the right with the vertical alignment on the CM2 boiler, it's a little different alignment. The, the slots of those heat exchangers are running more horizontally rather than vertically, but the fundamentals are exactly the same. It's the Inox Crossel pockets with that cross press design and a very high grade thin stainless steel for uh, maximum heat extraction. So lots of surface area translates into low thermal loading and uh, less stress on the combustion chamber. And we I talked about already that water-cooled area at the top of the boiler. It's also very accessible and easy to clean. When you swing the combustion chamber door open, you have 100% access to all the pockets of that boiler. So you can high pressure wash that, get any sediment or debris out of there very quickly and easily. And uh, you also get kind of a self-washing action when with the boiler itself, but there still is stuff that can get into the boiler room that makes it uh, required to be cleaned out. So it is easy to get at. And we talked about that low pressure loss through, through those pockets. The other feature that I want to mention a little bit here is debris and sludge settlement area at the bottom of the boiler. And that's a unique feature of the design of this, the, the circular shape of, of the combustion chamber. You can see it's a round combustion chamber design. So if you think about it, what's going to happen if any debris and sl uh, stuff gets into that boiler coming from the return line, where is it going to end up? Well, if you look at that design, where is sludge and debris going to settle out in this boiler? It's going to settle out all the way at the bottom of the boiler. And that's the best place for stuff to settle out because now it doesn't interfere with the heat transfer surface areas and cause hot spots and and potential failure points so it's again it's a key feature of the design of this boiler it's also something we used in our in our vertimat series and our vitola biferro series and in the new cu3a uh, residential boiler all of those have that area at the bottom end of the boiler where stuff can settle out and this is especially prevalent in a retrofit of an old building it's not always possible to catch all the stuff that comes out of that old piping. So a great feature of this boiler, you're not going to have debris and sludge fouling up the heat exchange surfaces and causing hot spots in the, in the boiler. And again, what does that translate into? What's the benefit? Longer service life, less susceptible to heat exchanger failure. If we take a closer look at how this, this heat exchanger works, you get a very intensive contact with the flue gases as they pass through that heat exchanger because you have that uh, we create a turbulent flow of flue gases as it goes through that heat exchanger with that that cross press design with those wafer sections that that we weave back and forth and that causes extensive and when you have a turbulent flow of flue gas like that it really causes the flue gas to transfer its heat heat very, very rapidly you have a parallel flow of the flue gases and the condensate what this does is it means that con two things, no accumulation of condensate, which means there's less potential for aggressive condensation, and also the flue gas cools very rapidly as it's going through here, and you get self-cleaning action as, as that flue gas moves through there. So latent and sensible heat are both extracted in this process. The sensible heat is from the non-condensing part of the gas. The, the latent heat is what translates when that flue gas condenses. So even when the boiler doesn't condense, if you're not in low enough temperatures, you're still extracting almost all of that sensible heat. That's why you're still getting 88% efficiency even when it's not condensing. But as soon as you get into that condensing mode where the water temperature drops below about 130 Fahrenheit, that's when you start getting the latent heat extraction with the flue gas condensate. And this is a look with the burner open. We're looking right at the front of that Inox Crossel section. So the burner's sitting in here, and the flue gas goes through all those little passageways there. And the water is in between those passages. So you can see a lot of water-backed surfaces there to rapidly transfer the heat. 
So that's a look at the at the heat exchanger. Let's take a look or closer look now at the burner. This is a matrix cylinder burner developed by Wiesman. And we've used it successfully on a number of boiler models. It uses, it comes with, for this boiler, a CSD gas train with valve closure test system. And that's a requirement for most commercial burners. We've got a, a Wiesman burner management control. Uh, well, I'll talk about that a little bit more later on. You can see there in the bottom there, the stainless steel mesh. And on the top, you know, this is without the burner firing. This is with the burner firing. Direct spark ignition system, ionization rod on the bottom there. And burner is capable of operating with up to high altitudes of, of 10,000 feet with some derating. So a uh, very, very good burner design. And we've been making and using this burner, this matrix series of burners for over 15 years now. This is a picture from our factory. You can see the cylinder burner is what we use in most of our Vito Dens 200 series boilers and the CM2 series boiler. The matrix dome burner is what we use in our Vito Cross OCU3A boiler. So it's, it's a very successful burner series Beastman uses in a lot of their different boilers. There's a closer look at the, the components of the burner itself. This is a fully modulating burner. So we have a fan motor here with a speed control. So that's going to vary the speed and allow us to have up to that five to one turndown ratio. So your air is coming in the bottom, your gas is coming in through here through the gas valve. The master brain of this unit is the VUC310 burner control. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. That's that's going to provide all your flame safeties and your burner sequencing. Natural gas or LP gas, of course, is, is possible with this burner. Very low emissions, less than 20 ppm of NOx. So it's a very clean burning uh, burner. It is. It comes to you factory calibrated. So it's simply a matter of mounting it on the burner, doing some calibration checks, hooking up the gas and, and then the controls, and, and it should run out of the box without a lot of, a lot of effort. It's very easy to service and, and maintain because you can get that hinged combustion chamber door. It's easy to get at all the components because they're right there on the front of the, of the unit. So all the major components, your, your, your spark electrodes, your ionization electrodes, your air pressure switch, your gas valve, uh, your blower motor, everything's right there, easily accessible. We have quick connect plugs on all the components. So you don't have to, have to do any hardware terminals, everything just plug connection. And so it really makes it easy to work on. The burner management control, that that's VUC310, uh, it provides the flame safety. It also provides, and that's sort of the sequencing that you know, interlocks with all the ignition system and pre-purge and post-purge and all that kind of stuff. It provides also temperature control, and I'll talk about that in a minute. It connects directly to the Vitotronic control with a, with a communication bus connection cable, and that provides us the ability to do diagnostics and service and, and, and fault alarms very easily through, through that boiler. There's an onboard diagnostic system on this boiler that really makes it super easy to work on. That's one of the greatest features of this, of this burner management control system is you've got sequence and diagnostic information right in the screen. You can see when there's a heat demand, when the flame's on, when it needs maintenance. If you're in the test mode, it gives you fault alarms. It's very easy to pinpoint and, and isolate parts of the system. So if you're trying to uh, isolate a uh, flame rod issue or your spark ignition, you can, or your post purge, you know, it's very easy to work through that with this, uh, with this burner control. So makes servicing and working in that burner very easy. The burner control also communicates, as I said, communicates with the Vitotronic control and we've eliminated mechanical temperature limits on this boiler. Now it uses uh, the fixed high limit and the adjustable high limits have been replaced by redundant electronic sensors. So these are actually now part of the burner control, not part of the boiler control. And the good thing about this is that we can pinpoint exactly when uh, a sensor gets out of calibration and we provide an alert to the control. So it's actually much more accurate than a mechanical limit and provides us much greater safety and alarm capability. So I have a little video here. You can see here, it's a burner test that we did in our lab. And you can see that's not something that you would do normally, uh, but we decided let's, let's fire this burner in open air so you can see what it looks like. And again, definitely don't try this at home. Uh, so you can see there how that matrix uh, cylinder burner operates with the uh, mesh screen. You'll see here the light off, there's the spark electrode uh, lighting off the flame. 
the ionization rod is at the bottom of that burner. And you can see different views here how the burner burner operates. And uh, it'll ramp up in a minute. You can see there's, there's a certain radiant effect from that screen. There's a lot of radiant energy radiating off that mesh because there's a lot of surface area in that mesh that provides a, a large radiant effect. There's not actually a huge flame on this on this burner. It, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of radiant effect, and uh, so very unique design and a great product, uh, a great burner that we've had a lot of success with. So I'll move on here. The boilers are shipped ready for natural gas. But uh, there's an LP conversion that's shipped with the burner. So there's no additional parts need to be serviced. There's simply uh, a change in the orifice you can see there, the orifice plate. And a software change means you install the orifice, you make the change, and you're ready to go on, on LP. And in most cases, you don't even need to do any additional calibration. The fuel pressure requirements, another great feature of this boiler is the flexible fuel choices you have. Not many commercial boilers can operate effectively down at four inches water column. We don't have a problem with that. So that really provides you a lot of flexibility in where you install this. And the last part I want to point out about the burner is the power requirements. This boiler uses 120 volt single phase power supply. So that means that not only is it electrically efficient, but it's also cost effective to wire. You're much simpler and easier to run when you're dealing with 120 volt, don't need three phase wire, and the electrical consumption is, is very, very low. You know, 900 watts maximum at, at, at the biggest size. So that's less than a toaster. So it doesn't consume a lot of, a lot of power. The burner door is hinged. So you can see here on the smaller sides, there's a, a bracket which you can mount the burner on either side. And on the bigger series of boiler, there's hinge pins welded into the frame. So you can, you can choose to hinge this right or left, whatever suits the requirement on the job site. So that's uh, the burner. Let's move on here and take a look at the control system. We use a, a control called the GW6B control. It's a multifunction outdoor reset control for single and multiple boilers. And it's got a large color touchscreen display interface. So it's, it's something that's very uh, new for Vspin, but it, it really works well. It modulates and stages and rotates up to eight boilers. It not only controls the burners, but it's also a system controller. So you can have multi-temperature space heating systems with up to three heating circuits and also domestic water production. Uh, Built-in setback timers, and also integrated lawn modules. So those are some of the features you see in a lot of the Vsman controls, but the thing that's most unique on this one is that it's a it's a touchscreen display with internal cascading capability. So there's three main configurations uh, for this for this control. It can operate as a single boiler control or it can operate a, in a multi-boiler system as a cascade or a master. So you would configure this boiler different, this control differently depending on, on how you use it. It's the same control, it just has those three configurations. And you, uh, so, so this would be an example of a single boiler application where the boiler is set to as a single boiler. You can see the, the screen in the bottom left there is a, is a snapshot of what the screen would look like. It's set up to do outdoor reset, control mixing valves, domestic water, burner modulation, and of course the safety management. Now, as a cascade control, we can go up to eight boilers. So you would set up one boiler, one control as the cascade and as the master control, and all the other controls are, are the slaves. And of course, now we can do the lead boiler can rotate. We stage and rotate those boilers to satisfy the load. And you can see on the screen here at the bottom, you can see right on the control, which burner is firing, what the burner firing rate is, and it's very visual uh, of what's going on with that with that system. So, and then the slave control, if all the other boilers are configured as slaves, and you could only see what's going on in, in, in each individual boiler there. So those are the three configurations for, for that control. Here's a look at the control itself. You've got the touchscreen interface in the center. You've got power switch, override switch. You've got some L LED lights there to indicate what's going on, and a couple of fuses on, on, the, on the right there. When you lift up the front cover of that control, that's where your lawn card for communication is, is located, your mixer board, all your sensors and your power, your supply uh, connections for your inputs and your outputs. So very easy control to work with. 
uh, quick connect plugs on most of those components, number coded, unique shaped plugs. The touchscreen control is very unique. Uh, we did do a webinar uh, a couple of weeks ago on the GW6B control. So if you want more information on that control, you may want to view that webinar on our website. But these are just a couple of snapshots of some of the screens, the home screen, the main menu screen, setback timers, and heating curves. Very visual, very easy to work with, especially those timers uh, and the uh, heating curves. You can see that it's very easy. You can see right there on the screen the line. And when you make adjustments up and down, with the shift or the slope, you can see exactly what the temperatures are gonna to change to at different times of the year. So you can see here with a 1.5 heating curve, it's minus 10 outside, I get 66 degrees Celsius supply water temperature. So it moves up and down according to that, to that scale. Now, of course, with the commercial boiler, we need to be able to integrate with the building management system. And there's three main ways we can do that with this control system. The easiest and simplest way is just to have the building management system send the boiler control a zero to 10 volt signal to say this is, which translates into the temperature that they want in their building. Then we let our boilers modulate and to, to supply a, a common supply set point temperature. So that's the simplest way, but we also have a couple of other ways of doing it. It is possible for a building management system to directly map the lawn points on our control system, but that's quite complicated and requires that they map all the control lawn points and and you uh, use tool binding mode. So the easier way is to use one of our interface modules and the Vito Gate 300 is, is the easiest way to do that. There's two versions. There's a lawn version, a backnet version and a Modbus version. And that allows the building management system to pick only the points that they want. So it's a lot simpler for them to, to program and they can pick and choose exactly what they want to see, what temperature set points, what status points, is the burner on, is it off, things like that. So this VitoGate 300 provides all of that capability for the building management system to view and or operate all the boiler control functions. And it directly mounts in the junction box. Uh, it's configurable via a web server and uh, it's got lots of diagnostic functions. So you can see that it, it's a window into our world. It gives the building management system the ability to look in and see what's going on anywhere in our system. and also provide commands as, as required. And it really is the, the best way to inter, interface with the building automation system. Now, of course, the GW6B control is fully capable of operating on its own without any building management system at all. And uh, it, it can control the burners, the, the system, the pumps, the mi mixing valves, the, everything. But of course, a lot of building system automation systems require some kind of interface to know what's going on in our system. So we provide that. Another way of doing in that uh, interface is with the VitoCom 100 LAN 1. This is a Wiesman system that links you up to the Vito data server in, in, in Europe. And now you can access that through an app. And then, so that allows you through this VitoCom module to see exactly what's going on in, in your system as well. So a couple different ways that you can get access to that to that boiler through the internet or give the building automation system the ability to access that. Okay, so let's move on and, and look at a, another feature is the venting of this boiler. Uh, Vspin offers multiple venting options and we provide a separate flue gas and combustion air opening at the back of that boiler. There's two materials we can use. There's the PPS polypropylene material or the stainless steel venting. We offer lots of options, vertical, sidewall, single pipe, dual pipe, uh, independent boilers or common venting. So, so lots of capability there. There is a combustion air intake kit supplied with the boiler and it uses a flexible hose that runs in from the back of the boiler up into the burner intake. And you can choose out of the, at the rear of that boiler to connect that that intake to, to a, a separate pipe and make it a sealed combustion system with the vent, the uh, combustion air coming right from outside, or you can draw room air through that as well, but you'd still use that, that combustion air intake pipe. So let's look at some of the venting configurations, two pipe systems. You can go sidewall, vertical, or even, or a hybrid type of system where you go, you know, flue gases up and out and, and vent pipes out the side. <clears throat> so lots of different combinations and, and permeations there with the, with the two pipe system. You also have single pipe. Single pipe gives you the longest possible vent lengths because you're only using one pipe. It does, however, require that you draw combustion air from the room. So in a lot of retrofits, 
you may have existing combustion air openings that you, in the mechanical room that you want to reuse, and, and this is a very simple way of doing that. We also offer a common venting option for multiple boilers, and there's a few things to be aware of on that. Up to a maximum of four boilers require separate combustion air intakes. A vertical termination only, you can't go through the wall with, with a common vented system. It has to go up through, this, through the vertical. And you can go up to uh, 200 feet of total length from 12 to 22 inch vent, depending on the size of the boilers you're connecting to that. And each boiler uses a flue gas damper at the back end of the boiler. So when a burner's not firing, the damper closes so that you don't have flue gases from one burner or one boiler being pushed into another. So you can see there, you've got an electrically operated uh, Blimo valve, which shuts off that boiler and isolates it from the rest of the boilers in that circuit. And there's a couple different configurations with the common vent header, either 45 or 90 degree connections uh, onto that venting system. We have lots of information available on venting. There's, there's a full manuals on both common venting and individual venting. So uh, certainly, if you want more details, you can contact our commercial department in-house in here or, or, or review those manuals. So where is the opportunity for this boiler? Uh, and I sort of look at this and go, well, anywhere where you'd use a non-condensing or a condensing boiler, commercial or, or large residential applications. And it's not restricted to any particular type. Boiler retrofits or new construction. You know, boiler retrofits often require high temperatures, high pressures, and we can do that with this boiler. New construction might have, you know, radiant floor heating or lower temperature radiators or low temperature fan coils, so we can really capture the benefit of, of condensing operations. So again, high temperature, low temperature, you, whatever the application, we can satisfy it with this boiler. D domestic water heating, we can, because of the high water temperature capability of this boiler, we can really generate high volumes of domestic hot water uh, when you need it with indirectly heated tanks. And multi-zone, multi-load systems, no problem. With our built-in uh, Vitrotronic control, we can do up to, uh, multiple heating circuits with mixing valves and with micro-loads and, and multi-zoning systems and the high-mass design of the spoiler, we're not going to have a problem with, with short cycling. So. Lots of applications really is suited for just about anything you could throw at this thing. It would be, be good for it. So just to sum up, it really is uh, everything you need in a commercial boiler. It's It's got tons of, of features that make it really suitable for a wide range of applications from, as I went through there, with the temperature, the pressure, the multi-loads with, with cascading up to up to eight boilers. You can really do a lot of mechanical room with this boiler, up to eight, almost 18 million BTUs. You've got the temperature and pressure capability, which makes it uh, suitable for lots of retrofit applications. And overall, it's going to produce dramatic fuel savings. When you combine the condensing potential, the outdoor reset control, the burner modulation, and the temperature modulation with the outdoor reset control, it's a powerful combination to really dramatically reduce the fuel consumption of, of your customer's building. It's going to last. It's built to last with durable stainless steel construction and high mass design. So these are things that for us have proven to be a, a great feature of all our Vito Crossel series of boilers. They really work well over the long haul. The Premix burner gives you that great turndown rate and also operates at very low gas pressure. So if you've got a building that has uh, you know gas supply issues, like a lot of uh, old older parts of, of big cities sometimes have problems with gas supply. So not an issue with this boiler. Quiet operation, flexible venting options to sort of round out that the 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 features of this boiler and, and certainly being easy to service and maintain are are great features of this boiler as well. So so overall you look at all the features of that and you translate over the benefits to your customer. It's a great product for your commercial applications. So that's all the uh, information I have today uh, on this product. I hope you've enjoyed our webinar. We had a couple questions that were asked along the way, and I think Mark has already addressed those. So I'll just wrap up by saying that you can certainly get more information from us. Start with your sales rep. There are your local feet in the ground that provide you with information and quotations and, and on-site support when you need it. 
Uh, you can also access tons of information from our from our website. And there's all kinds of manuals and technical data sheets that you can download from our pro login section of, of the Vsman website. And we have more training available. We have lots of in-depth one and two day seminars on our Vsman Academy schedule. Uh, so if you want more information, we can certainly uh, help you out there. We also will uh, be posting all of our previous webinars on our website, and you'll be able to view those at your leisure. Uh, I mentioned already that we did a seminar in the last few weeks. We've done a seminar on the VitoCom 100, so if you want more information on that, if you want more information on the GW6B control, we, we've done a webinar on that. If you want more information on the residential series, the VitoCross 300 series, of this boiler, the CU3A, we did a webinar on that as well. So, lots of information available to you, if you if you want it. So, just to wrap up, thanks for coming. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to to come see us, and and join us here at the Vesman Academy for this webinar. My email address and and phone contact is at the bottom. If you have any questions or comments, we certainly appreciate feedback, and uh, appreciate any comments that you have. Uh, about this webinar.